Nearly 200 earthquakes were recorded in Yellowstone National Park. 450 earthquakes under Mount St. Helens. Hundreds of small earthquakes were detected under Mount Rainier. Yellowstone rising after Cascadia quakes. A jolt across the west. It began with the ground shaking violently in the Pacific Northwest. On a quiet morning, Mount St. Helens, already infamous for its 1980 eruption, was rattled by a magnitude 7.2 earthquake. The tremor was not a volcanic eruption itself but the kind of deep crustal quake that rearranges stresses across the landscape. Just days later, Mount Rainier, another towering stratovolcano and a constant source of anxiety for volcanologists, experienced a series of strong tremors that shook its icy flanks. These were not ordinary earthquakes. They were part of a broader seismic chain reaction, transmitting stress eastward through fault systems and the rigid blocks of the North American plate. Few realized at the time that this seismic energy would awaken one of the most dangerous geological features on Earth, Yellowstone. Yellowstone's restless heart the hotspot beneath the Yellowstone rests above a mantle hotspot. A rising plume of molten rock that has burned its way through the crust for at least 16 million years. This hotspot has left a trail of extinct volcanic scars across Idaho, visible today as the Snake River Plain. At Yellowstone itself, the hotspot feeds a colossal magma reservoir, partly molten, partly crystalline, that fuels the park's geysers, hot springs, and hydrothermal basins. The last three caldera-forming eruptions, occurring to point 1 million, 1.3 million, and 631,000 years ago, were catastrophic. Since then, Yellowstone has produced smaller lava flows and countless hydrothermal explosions, but no truly massive eruption. Still, it remains alive. The ripple effect of Earth quaction. Seismic waves from the Cascades traveled into the Rocky Mountains. Yellowstone's crust, already fractured and pressurized, responded like a cracked pane of glass under strain. Small fissures widened, hydrothermal conduits shifted, and magma trapped deep below began to push upward ever so slightly. For decades, scientists have recorded uplift and subsidence cycles at Yellowstone. Normally, the land rises a few centimeters per year, then relaxes back. This time, the uplift was different. GPS stations detected sharp acceleration in ground deformation, with parts of the caldera floor rising nearly 6 centimeters in a single month. INSAR satellites confirmed a broad dome-shaped swelling beneath the Sour Creek and Mallard Lake resurgent domes, suggesting magma or hot fluids were accumulating. SEISMOMETERS picked up a series of earthquake swarms. Thousands of small quakes clustered beneath the park, some shallow, others deep near the magma chamber. The geysers respond. Yellowstone is famous for its geysers, but their activity is delicate, controlled by underground plumbing, where superheated water builds pressure until it erupts. When the ground shifts, so do the geysers. Old Faithful, 
once reliable to within minutes, began to deviate wildly from its schedule, sometimes erupting late, sometimes blasting early with unexpected force. Steamboat Geyser The tallest active geyser in the world suddenly roared back to life, producing jets of boiling water higher than a 30-story building. Dormant geysers that had not erupted in decades sprang awake, as if the park itself were venting its frustration. Rangers reported that new fumaroles opened near thermal basins, spewing hot steam laced with sulfur. Pools changed color as microbial mats were cooked by sudden surges of boiling water. Most alarming were hydrothermal explosions. In several places, superheated groundwater flashed to steam, blasting out craters and throwing rocks dozens of meters. Though small compared to volcanic eruptions, these explosions were deadly within close range, prompting emergency closures of visitor trails. Rising pressure, gas emissions with fractures opening. Gases that normally remain trapped within the hydrothermal system surge to the surface. Scientists recorded a 50% increase in carbon dioxide emissions in some areas, along with elevated hydrogen sulfide and sulfur dioxide. These gases hinted at fresh inputs from deeper magma, rather than just recycled hydrothermal fluids. The sound of the deep seismologists noticed a change in the character of earthquakes. Instead of only brittle failure quakes caused by rock cracking, there were now low-frequency tremors, the kind usually associated with magma moving or pressurized fluids vibrating within conduits. This shift worried the USGS Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, as it suggested that magma or magmatic gases might be intruding higher into the crust.